Hi guys, welcome to the program. I have a very important news to deliver today concerning an official post-mortem autopsy report of a real-life patient who died in Beijing about a month ago. And this patient actually visited Wuhan city uh, several days before that and developed acute COVID-19 disease and led to his demise Therefore, this is the first time that we have a glimpse into what really happened pathologically in a patient died of COVID-19. Patient is a 50-year-old gentleman who was admitted to a fever clinic on January 21st, 2020 with symptoms of fever, chills, cough, fatigue, and shortness of breath. He reported travel history to Wuhan City from January the 8th to January the 12th. And he had initial symptoms of mild chills and dry cough on January the 14th, which is day one of the illness. But he did not see a doctor and kept working until January 21st. So when he was admitted, the chest x-ray showed shadows, patchy shadows in both lungs. And a throat swab was taken on January 22nd, which is day number nine of the illness at the Beijing Centers for Disease Control, confirmed by reverse real-time PCR essay that the patient indeed was infected with SARS-CoV-2 virus leading to COVID-19 disease. He was immediately admitted to the isolation ward and received supplemental oxygen through the face mask. And here we have a brief course of hospitalization in the form of a table. As you can see, from day number one to day number six, patient was actually unaware that he was infected with SARS-CoV-2 virus. He was admitted on day number seven of illness. At that point, he had cough, he got chills, he had fever and fatigue, including shortness of breath. Patient was admitted with a temperature of 39 degrees Celsius, and he was immediately given IV steroids, IV antibiotics, and double antiretroviral therapy, including interferon alpha. These are powerful medications in hope that it can reverse or slow down his deterioration of his pneumonias. At one point on day number 12, an addition of marrow venom, which is a second powerful IV antibiotics was given to the patient. And on day number 14, patient expired at 18.31. These are the chest x-rays obtained during the course of hospitalization. As you can see on illness day number eight, which was also the first day of hospitalization, patient started to have development of patchy infiltrates on both sides of the lungs. This is the right side, this is the left side, and this is actually the heart of the patient. You can see the patchy infiltrates and progress to day number 10 with worsening of the consolidation and on day number 12 start to have more of that whiteness and patchy infiltrate and patients start to have emphysema starting to develop on the upper lung fields of the lungs on day number 12 and this is leading the patient to acute respiratory distress syndrome resulting in respiratory failure and cause the patient's demise. Now, moving on to the clinical laboratory test, we are shown here different kind of lab tests, including complete blood counts. We have biochemical tests. We have arterial blood gas analysis. We have coagulation profile. And in the very bottom, we have what we call inflammatory panel. Now, interestingly, in the blood counts, what we see here is the white cell counts, in a, instead of being elevated, it is actually quite low, especially the lymphocyte counts are quite depleted. Now, normally in infections and inflammations, whether or not it's viral or bacterial, most of the time we see leukocytosis, meaning that the white cell counts are elevated in response to the infection and inflammation, but not in the case of COVID-19. We actually see quite the opposite the lymphocyte count start to dwindle or decrease, and the overall white cell count also start to decrease, leading to leukopenia instead of leukocytosis. 
Now, in the biochemical testing, we see that the ASD and ALT and LDH, which are the measure of the liver function in terms of ASD and ALT, and we see that this patient did have some form of what we call transaminitis, meaning elevation of liver enzymes, and that indicate liver injury. However, in the pathological slides, we did not see any significant liver injuries on those slides. So therefore, these elevation of liver enzyme could have been drug induced. We know that a patient was placed on two powerful antibiotics and also two powerful antivirals. Now moving on to the inflammation panel, it is quite interesting that the patient is actually having quite normal level or close to low, normal level as the time goes of procalcitonin, which is a measure of infection in the blood. But look at the interleukin-6, which is a pro-inflammatory enzyme or pro-inflammatory marker, and it is sky high. It is so high that in terms of these interleukins trap the lymphocytes themselves. And, and that probably explains why the patient has a depletion in the lymphocytes. So these tests are quite interesting as we find out more and more how the SARS-CoV-2 affect or infect the cells. And these are the pathological characteristic of the biopsy samples taken from both of the lungs represented by the picture A and B. Also, the liver tissue in C and the heart tissue in D. What we can see is the histological examination showed diffuse alveolar damage with what we call cellular fibromyxoid exudate. The right lung show evidence of what we call desquamations of the pneumocytes, meaning that the lung cells start to shut off, start to slough off, and there are what we call formation of hyaline membrane. And when we see that, it indicates patient is going through acute respiratory distress syndrome. And that in terms will cause respiratory failure. We can also see pulmonary edema, which means swelling of the cells in both samples. And onto the liver tissue, we see significantly less damages done to the liver cells. We see to some degree what we call steatosis, meaning that fatty infiltration, but we don't see the destruction of the liver cells. And the same goes for the heart cells. The heart cells show significantly less damages done by the virus. Therefore, in conclusion, the SARS-CoV-2 virus has the ability to significantly damage the pneumocytes of the lungs, but to a much lesser extent, damaging the liver tissue and the heart tissue, as we can see in this pathological manifestation reports. And this was the official autopsy report of a young patient infected with SARS-CoV-2 leading to COVID-19 disease and die from it. I hope you find the information helpful. Once again, thank you for watching. Please help the channel by subscribe and share, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.